Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for March 23rd, 2024. I got a new small but quite significant addition to the weather studio here. Decided to get a new weather radio because my other one that's over there is dead. That would be pretty inconvenient if I was live streaming and uh, just so happens that there was a, a storm that went by my area and... Yeah, so we decided to make smart financial decisions here and buy ourselves a new one. And uh, I highly recommend you should too if you were ever considering a weather radio. No, I am not sponsored by Midland, although I wish I was. Call me. <laughs> but without further ado, no more self-promoting, no more uh, updates on my end. We'll talk about updates on your end. And that is where we start to get into severe weather. Today... There's not really too much besides if you're in the Florida Keys, one out of five on the severe weather scale. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty mild. Uh, going into tomorrow, however, on Sunday, we do have a two out of five on the severe weather scale here for uh, some areas here in Kansas and Oklahoma. My area that I would really watch out for would be along the border of the two states where the potential for large hail, damaging winds, and of course a tornado or two would be possible. You can see this is highlighted here based off of the probability of a tornado. Within a 25 mile radius, there is a five to 9% chance of seeing a tornado here within this brown contour. And then of course the surrounding area here in this green has a lower chance, a lower probability of seeing a tornado. I don't think the probabilities will increase or decrease. I think this is just perfect right where it is. This is a bona fide slight risk of severe weather. And then moving off into Monday, we once again also have a two out of five in the severe weather scale here for portions of the western deep south into the eastern portions of Texas. And then we also have a localized area of severe weather over here into portions of the upper Midwest. So first thing we're gonna wanna talk about because we talked about the severe weather front, we're also gonna wanna talk about the flooding and winter weather front of this as well. We've got a storm that is currently moving through the east coast right now. A lot of folks that are over here in the southeast are just getting some residual showers and thunderstorms, but up here in the northeast as well as portions of Delmarva, there's a lot of rain and some snow going on. So folks that are a little bit closer to say Long Island and Cape Cod, you guys are experiencing a lot of rainfall, but folks that are a little bit further up north, you guys can be expecting some substantial amounts of snow and freezing precipitation. That will likely start to move out coming the uh, morning hours of Sunday. So realistically speaking, that'll just be your conditions for the rest of the day today. We are expecting a lot of rainfall to kind of pile up over the areas as well. Probably talking about at least another two to three inches of rainfall expected here across portions of the northeast. Uh, there's already been, I'd say, about an inch of rainfall that has fallen across some of these areas down here into the mid-Atlantic. So this is really just additional rainfall that is going to fall on top of what has already been going on. And of course, with the additional snowfall that some folks may have already seen, we're also expected to see a good two to three inches of snowfall that is up north of I-90. Uh, well, not really north of I-90, but folks that may be north of I-90 here into portions of the Northeast. And then uh, maybe all the way down to Binghamton, additional maybe inch or two is possible down there as well. Uh, but folks that may be over here near New Brunswick, as well as portions of Maine, we could be talking about some areas that could see a foot to a foot and a half, maybe even two feet of snow possible as well. In addition to that, major icing is possible across portions of coastal Maine heading up into New Brunswick, as well as southern New Hampshire. So please watch out for that as the potential for once again, some significant freezing and uh, icing is possible, making conditions for travel very, very hazardous. So now we're gonna start talking about Sunday's severe weather potential. Uh, one thing that I do wanna mention is that this is kind of a whole synoptic setup that's gonna be moving on through. So we're gonna kind of speed run through this as quickly as possible. Our 500 millibar jet is gonna start to move on through. We have a big trough that is starting to dig on through the southwestern portions of the states. And we can start to see the trough start to weaken as we get into portions of the south central plains. You can see that as wind shear starts to decrease, it also starts to fan out in all sorts of different directions. This is called difluence aloft. And this difluence is associated with a lot of divergence, which basically creates a lot of good ventilation for showers and thunderstorms. This is also accompanied by a very strong upper level jet streak that is moving on through the area, which is kind of signifying the intensification 
of our low level, low pressure system. This will eventually continue to move the system off towards the north and east, where we could probably assume that the storm will start to occlude further and further, and then eventually weaken as it moves on through. And you can see that is exactly what happens with our 500 millibar wind shear. Our low pressure system starts to become a little bit more vertically aligned as it starts to move off into portions of the northern plains into the upper Midwest, and we could start to see our wind shear start to increase even a little bit further as we move off into portions of the upper Midwest as well. Now, what really is going to get this system going is we have our dry line setup that is gonna to start to form. You can see here on our dew point map and our wind barbs, we don't really have very high dew points, especially over here along the dry line, but what you can see here is there's these little bulges that kind of come out here from our dry line and these contrasts between very, very dry dew points of 20 degrees and very, I'd say, yeah, not even very, decently moist. About 40 to 50 degree dew points here in the portions of Kansas and Oklahoma are really what's going to increase lower level convergence in some areas, which is what storms are likely going to be initiating off of. And especially here in the front part of these bulges and the northern parts of these bulges is where we're going to want to watch out for the potential of initiation. And as you can see, time goes along further and further into the evening. We start to see the dew points start to increase here along the surface, which is what we're going to watch. But as time moves along into the evening as well, notice how we start to lack those bulges, which means that areas of initiation could probably become less and less in quantity, which means as we move further along in time, there probably will be less and less chances for thunderstorms to start to form. So we have to consider that as a possibility. But the one thing that I wanna mention is that along those areas of convergence and the dry line, wherever those bulges will start to form, we will also start to see an increase of vertical wind shear because as convergence starts to increase, that wind and that air will naturally start to rise and it will start to kind of fill in the void for wherever that divergence aloft that we were talking about just a minute ago would be. And in this case, this would mean the chance for some strong thunderstorms to be possible across the area. But once again, because some of those bulges start to kind of die out, so too does that vertical wind shear aloft, which means stuff really won't be all too active once we get towards midnight. One thing that I do want to mention though is in the lower levels of the atmosphere, we're talking about from the surface to about three kilometers above ground level, we will start to see a localized area of some instability that will begin to develop. And this will basically be where these thunderstorms are going to try and take advantage of the atmosphere and maybe of course become severe. So something to really watch out for, the environment is primed for some form of severe weather. It just won't be a significant severe weather outbreak. It's gonna be far from that. The wind shear though is significant. The instability and the moisture content that is in this environment is not. And so uh, that's kind of our one saving grace for right now. We do want to monitor, however, that come tomorrow, there could be the potential for things to uptrend or downtrend. So please pay attention to your local National Weather Service forecast offices for more information. Regardless of that fact, there could be some scattered convection out in front of the event here come Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon. And then once we get to about, I would say four or five o'clock in the afternoon slash evening, you could start to see some of these showers and thunderstorms start to fire off over here into portions of Kansas and Oklahoma, maybe even some additional you know, formation of a thunderstorm or two over here in central Oklahoma. Those storms over here in Kansas, uh, at least here in the beginning into the medium stages of this event, we're talking about six, seven, eight o'clock, uh, maybe even around five o'clock as well, is the best opportunity for tornadoes to form. And then after that, it'll start to get pretty scarce even after into that environment. Further down south, we're also going to want to talk about some thunderstorms that are going to start to form into a QLCS, a big squall line that's going to really start to kind of fire off and move further and further off to the east. And that'll be our catalyst for really the severe for really the severe weather event on Monday. You can see a big squall line starts to form on through. And realistically speaking, there's not really too much with this event. Really a lot of strong damaging wind gusts and maybe some spotty hail. Could be the chance for a spin up or two, but honestly not really too too much that is going to be impacted with this environment. You can kind of tell that is the case because though you have a big kind of contrast between some very moist dew points of say mid to lower 60s and then 
You have uh, mid to lower 50s back behind it. This isn't exactly uh, that much of a dry line. It's more of a boundary that's starting to move on through because of the QLCS. And then you have a lot of cold pooling back in behind it. So uh, realistically speaking, a lot of this is a lot of wind. If you get any storms that can form out in front of it, maybe the potential for uh, a tornado or two and some spotty hail is possible, but a lot of wind is really gonna be moving on through this environment. And to finish up our video, believe it or not, we also have the opportunity for folks to see an aurora. And this is our forecast, well, not my forecast. This is the National Weather Service, NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center's forecast for where folks could potentially see an aurora. So if you're in the red areas, obviously that is the highest chance of you seeing an aurora. Green is the lowest chance. And then this red line right here, this is the furthest south you could potentially see as of right now. Now, personally, as well as uh, some other people that I have talked to, this could probably be expanded a bit further south. So for the folks that could potentially see it, you could see an aurora tomorrow night into Monday morning. Now, the real question is who could potentially see this aurora? So we'll go on through here. I first want to mention that uh, folks that are over here in the northern plains into the upper Midwest got a lot of snow over there in your area, which means there's probably not going to be a whole lot of good visibility. Uh, folks that are over in this dark gray, you guys see this dark gray right here. This is where cloud cover is going to be really non-existent for the most part. There's not really going to be a whole lot of clouds in the sky. So if we remember with our forecast, the red line extended through about three quarters of the way up from the south. So that's right about here. Maybe it can go a little bit further south. Uh, maybe it could go a little bit further north. Uh, but folks that could be up here in the northeast, as well as into portions of Ontario and uh, even into Quebec, you guys could see the aurora. Folks that are up here in the portions of Washington and British Columbia, you guys could potentially see the aurora. But if you're from the Great Lakes all the way up in the Northern Plains, as well as portions of the Rockies, all the way down into the Southern Plains and uh, even into the Deep South, you're gonna have a lot of cloud cover in general. So it's not really gonna be that very likely that you see much of anything. So if you're over here in the portions of the Northeast, maybe in the Eastern Ohio River Valley, as well as areas over here in the Cascades in British Columbia, there's a good chance you could see an aurora. So if you wanna go out, feel free to go out. Be uh, pretty interesting. Send me a picture or two if uh, I'm not chasing. <laughs> but once again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family on social media. Also follow me on social media, link will be in the description down below. We could have a live stream tomorrow, We'll see how things kind of function, but if they don't function that way, if we don't live stream, we probably will have a video that'll be uploaded sometime on Monday if we don't live stream then as well. So thank you guys so much for watching once again. I'll catch you guys next time we uh, post something on this channel. So see you all then. <laughs> Peace.